ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am 12 Kyle. Check this out. <laughs> On this episode, uh, what I want to talk about is anthems, more specifically the top five ATL anthems. Now, if you're new to the podcast, first time listening, I live in Atlanta. Been living here 25 years. I'm not 25 years old. <laughs> I grew up in South Carolina, moved here after college. And being in Atlanta, I've lived here 25 years. Hard to believe that it's been 25 years, but it's been that long. I haven't lived anywhere else. This is home. If you ask me where I'm from, I don't say Atlanta. I say Florence, South Carolina, because that's where I'm from. But where I live and where I continue to live, city of Atlanta, right? Metro Atlanta. Um, so the other day I'm chilling, sitting here at work. Actually, I wasn't working, but I was supposed to be working. I was actually kind of goofing off. And get a little notification on the Apple Watch, get a tweet. And the tweet comes from at Encyclopedia Hip Hop. Now, if you're familiar with Encyclopedia Hip Hop, Encyclopedia Hip Hop is run by none other than my man, Eclectic. Friend of the show, my boy, he's been on here several times. A lot. I've been on his podcast a lot. Um, he sends me this tweet. And <laughs> in typical asshole eclectic fashion, uh, it just says hashtag ATL at 12 Kyle podcast. And within the tweet, there's a video. And in the video, it appears to be a podcast or at least a, a clip from a conversation on a podcast. And you know, he wanted me to obviously listen to it. Now, I'll be honest, before clicking on it, I didn't know who it was or what they were talking about. Never even heard of this podcast. And I'm not going to mention them because I don't know who they are. Um, nonetheless, I figured it was just eclectic being messy, starting some shit, ruffling some feathers, stepping on some toes. But anyway, I'll, I'll spare you the details. Here's the clip. All right. So if you heard the clip, because if you if you're listening to this on YouTube, you're not going to hear any of that because you can't play it on YouTube. Um, the brother said. First of all, he's not counting outcasts, which. <laughs> in my opinion, and, and, and let me start even before I start again, I don't know this gentleman. I don't know their podcast. I, this is no disrespect to them because I don't know who they are and they don't know me. And, you know, everybody's, everybody has an opinion and I'm sure that this guy's from Atlanta. Um, however, you can't say, well, we're not counting outcasts as far as Atlanta anthems. Now, what the one thing he did say that I agree with is that, yeah, if you're from Atlanta, or you live in Atlanta, you take pride in the city. And there is an extreme amount of pride in the city. And I take pride in the city because I've been here 25 years. And the great part about my time here in Atlanta is that I've watched the city grow uh, from a perspective of its growth coincided with my growth. Um, I was here for a lot of everything. I mean, like I got here the year after the Olympics and I was here for freak me. Well, I was I wasn't in Atlanta. I wasn't living in Atlanta. I was in school at South Carolina State University. But I came down to the legendary freak of 1994, which I did a podcast about. If you haven't heard that, go check it out. It is hilarious. Um, shout out to everybody that came to freak me. Shout out to everybody who came to freak me and stayed in Atlanta because like Freak me was the reason why I moved to Atlanta. I mean, like it, it's it's no it's no surprise. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, he, he's right. We do take a level of pride 
in the city. We take a level of pride in, you know, some people take a level of pride in the sports teams. Uh, I'm not one of them, although I do love the Hawks. Shout out to my Hawks. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm not really rocking with the pro teams. Um, and I mean, I don't think the Falcons will ever get overblowing a 25 point lead in the Super Bowl. And the Braves, well, fuck the Braves. The Braves, they play baseball in Cobb County. But that's another story for them. This is not a sports episode, right? So he's right in that sense where there is a level of, uh, pride in the city there's a level of pride in you know being southern and being from the south and atlanta was very responsible for that but i i I got a chance to actually you know see this particular video you guys heard the audio but i actually saw this video clip and you know the guy looks to be in his early 40s so he was around he was outside he mentioned the birthday bash uh which i was there for and he is correct at the birthday bash, they were screaming for Pastor Troy when uh, Master P was on the stage. And Master P and the powers that be sub- subsequently had Pastor Troy's mic cut off, um, which was, you know, looking back on it, down, downright hilarious um, and petty for that matter. But I will say he mentioned, you know, three songs, uh, Knuck If You Buck, uh, No More Playing G.A., Knuck If You Buck by Crime Mob, No More Play in GA by Pastor Troy, and uh, DJ Yo, excuse me, DG Yola, uh, Ain't Gonna Let Up. Now, I like DJ Yola's song, Ain't Gonna Let Up. That was in uh, 2006, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but no, it's not an Atlanta anthem. And I mean, like, you can make a case that it might be like, you know, third string Atlanta anthem, (laughs) but it's not a first team Atlanta anthem. And so since Eclectic sent that to me, I came up with a list of my personal top five Atlanta anthems. Um, And these are in no particular order. Uh, Let's start with the obvious. Number one, 2004 crime mob nook if you buck yeah man i mean that joint goes hard i mean it, it's it's um uh, it goes without saying that that is definitely an anthem i, I don't think you have to <laughs> you don't have to poll that many people to find out what their thoughts on on the good old nook if you buck um you know, it, it's a song that you don't even have to be fake. Because I'll be honest, I I might know five crime mob songs, but that's one of them, and that's number one. <laughs> um, number two, I gotta go with 1996's Outcast Elevators. Listen, you had to be outside for this. And again, no disrespect to the brother on the podcast, but I don't think he was outside for this. I don't. He couldn't have been because there's no way that you leave Outcast off any Atlanta list. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. There will be no disrespect of the AT aliens. And it's not, I don't think he was being disrespectful, but at the same time, I can't conceive where there would be a list if you mention anything about hip hop without mentioning Outkast. And now keep in mind, Outkast was not the first group to break the door open for Atlanta. They kicked that door down, but they weren't the first. I mean, like, you got to know know your Atlanta history. I mean, you got to know about acts like Kilo Ali. Now, these are people that were popping when I was coming up and when I got to Atlanta. Kilo Ali, Raheem the Dream, and even before them, back in 88, my man MC Shy D dropped this joint right here. Now, he was the first to let you know Atlanta's where I stay. He was, this was the first song, in my opinion, that put Atlanta on the map when it came to rap. 
but this song was so obscure. This song came out in 88, and I don't think I heard it until 1990. I mean, like it was it was a local hit. It was a local smash. But, you know, rap at that particular time was very regional. And remember, we didn't have the internet in 1988. And then obviously there's so many other um classic albums, classic songs that came out in 1988 that, you know, MC Shadi's song shouting out his hometown of Atlanta got, you know, pushed to the side. Atlanta's where I stay. Yeah, that joint that joint was 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 dope for that time. And it again, it was something that put the city on. But I don't think the brother knew about that one. <laughs> or maybe he's speaking to an audience that weren't that wasn't born in 88, so maybe he didn't want to bring that one up. But no, you can't talk about and these are those are honorable mentions. I'm not putting them on the list, but you cannot mention Atlanta hip hop and leave out cats like Kilo Ali, Raheem Adream, and Shadi. I wanted to play the Shadi joint just so y'all could hear it. So nah, you know. You, you can't say, well, hey, this is Atlanta. No, no, no. Before there was Outkast, there was MC Shadi. Before there was Goody Mob, there was Raheem the Dream. Before there was, uh, you know, Crime Mob, there was Kilo Ali. So there had to be somebody to at least get to the door before the door got open. All right, back to the list. Uh, he mentioned it in his uh, speech. Um, number three, you got to go with 2002, Jermaine Dupri, Welcome to Atlanta with Ludacris. I mean, if we're talking anthems, come on now. That's played at every Hawks game, every Falcons game. I, I don't think they play it at the Braves game because, again, the Braves play in Cobb County. I don't like the Braves. I'm a Yankees fan, so I don't care one way or the other. But just for context of those who don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm sure even at the when the Braves won the World Series last year, I'm sure that they played Welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> In fact, no, 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 I take that back. I want to say Jermaine Dupri performed at their uh championship parade or something like that i think if, if i'm not mistaken he did i didn't watch it but i think he did i think i saw something on instagram um yeah so that song has to make it um number four you cannot if you're talking about anthems this has to be on any anthem from atlanta or the south for that matter 1996, Goody Mob, Dirty South. Come on, man. What are we talking about here? <laughs> I mean, you got on your podcast, you mentioned nothing about Dirty South. Come on, man. Even if I said, okay, well, you can let, I'll let, you know, Jermaine and Luda slide. I'll let Cass slide. You cannot mention ATL anthems and not mention Dirty South. You can't. It's, it's impossible. Number five. Damn. By the Young Bloods. Man, listen. This joint. <laughs> if you know, you know. This was an era. This was an era of Dirty South. I mean, like at that particular time. Lil John, who produced this track, was everywhere. Now I could make a case that this is the same track as Yeah from Usher, um, but we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> he just relooped the loop. Um, but nah, that's an anthem, man. That is an ant, that is an ATL, that is a first string ATL anthem. And again, I don't know, you know, if, if they were just relegated to three, but he only mentioned three and he didn't mention damn. I mean, at least let damn be an honorable mention. And last but not least, and I know I said five, damn it, this is six. He mentioned it. 1999's No More Play in GA by Pastor Troy. Pure 
fire starter <laughs> fire starter and uh fight starter for that matter um yeah man i mean that's a, that's a jam in and of itself uh you know i remember uh being a little league football coach when i was coaching my son cameron's football team and uh, i would play that joint every every right before the game in my headphones and it would get me so amped and so hyped and i remember the kids saying coach 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 12 what are you listening to <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to grown folks music i ain't listening to smokey that's for sure um nah that's that's an anthem as well too and again you know no disrespect because I, i'm sure that you know it's it's hard to narrow it down to three hell i gave you six and i tell you this is the top five but um i when i think about first string anthems yeah i'm putting all of these on the first string and you can make a case that you know dj d excuse me dg yola uh i don't know why i want to call him dj dg yola you know second probably probably third or fourth string you know um but it's a lot that goes on that second string of atl anthems i mean it's a long list and again i mean we're we're, we're very prideful about our music we we saw we've seen i've seen personally uh the city go from being an afterthought in hip-hop to being the epicenter of the the genre and culture um and i did a podcast on it earlier this calendar year you know atlanta's had a you know a chokehold on hip-hop for the longest and honestly they they've delivered some great mcs they've delivered some good rappers They've delivered some trend-setting rappers. Shout out to the Migos. Um, you know, so it, it's been uh, it's been a melting pot here. You you get a little bit of everything in Atlanta when it comes to rap and hip hop. But um, yeah, man. I mean, I again, everybody is entitled to their opinion. No, again, it's all said in jest and fun. No disrespect to them. Again, I don't know that podcast. I'm not familiar with them. I, and this podcast wasn't to bash them, but I just wanted to point out like you know just give you some context and some some perspective uh because it makes a difference if you know and you've been around the music and you know and you were outside when some of this stuff came out you know if you were young enough or excuse me or not old enough to know about mc shadi then you just don't know but you should do your history you know because atlanta rap didn't start with migos it didn't start with outcast you know there were people that paved the way in between and the great thing about this city is that, you know, it's been all encompassing for new local talent. And for the most part, from what I've always seen is that the talent has been able to break here and then venture out. Because if you can get your music played, particularly in the clubs, particularly in strip clubs, because a lot, a lot of cats, that's where, you know, they got their start. If their their music was able to get played at strip clubs, because I remember you know, I was out outside for for the break of um, acts like Jeezy and uh, Gucci Mane. I mean, their music got played in strip clubs first before they got to the clubs. And they were on fire in the strip clubs. I, I tell the story all the time. Like, I remember being at uh, Club Strokers, strip club in Atlanta. And they played Icy. And every they play icy four times one night <laughs> and every dancer knew all the words and i'd never heard this song before in my life and i'm like what is this song like it was catchy it was dope it was it was it was fly it had a nice hook but everybody in the club knew the shit and i didn't know it i was like i've never heard it. and at the time i was listening to the radio but it wasn't on the radio it was in the strip club it burned up the strip club and then it got to the clubs and then it got to radio and it took off and the next thing you know you know Jeezy and Gucci are rap superstars or rap stars I should say and they're hood stars in Atlanta and they just blew up from there and look at them now but that's how it got started and that's how you know music really really took off here and again, it's been very cultivating and it's been it's been a good thing to watch. Now, I will say this much and I've been I'll be totally honest with you. I'm very disconnected. 
I'm very disconnected to the music scene. And there was a time like, you know, earlier when I got here, I would go to clubs and I would just absorb the music. I would just love to just be in the scene because every night it was something different. Every club was something different. You, you, the vibe, it was, it was a cool ass vibe in the city. I don't know that that exists now. It probably still does, but I don't, I mean, I, why would I, I'm almost 50. Why would I go to a club? <laughs> no, nah, man. I, I don't want to hear little scrappy B sides no more. I don't want to hear little baby, the baby, half a baby, none of them. No disrespect, but that's not my steez. That ain't how I kick it. It's just not, you know, but you got to salute the, the, the ones that paved the way and, you know, there were some rappers that gave us some anthems. And I think this podcast or the, that other podcast that I played, I think, you know, they touched on it, but I don't think they went as probably as deep. And maybe they did go deeper. I don't know. All I had was the clip that Eclectic sent. So I got to thank Eclectic for sending it to me because it created content, as, as I told him it would. But at the same time, I want to just kind of let people know. What Andre 3000 said still reigns true to this day. South got something to say. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm your boy, 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. Five G's.